Thank you everybody for watching this video. Push the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell. It will help us tremendously to grow this channel. We have a bunch of stuff coming out for you, the fans, unique content, so please stay tuned. All right, JHK here for the All-Star, and joining me right now is UFC featherweight Derek Minner. Derek, thank you so much for the time. Where are you sitting right now? Uh, I'm at Tim and Gina's house, uh, just uh, chilling out before uh, before the next one. Last hard week, man, so I'm just ready to get it over with. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, before we get into that, I wanted to ask you about your brother. Was it your brother that recently fought for cage aggression? Yep, 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 yep. All right, he tell me about his, that. Uh, Oh man, uh, he was getting ready for his uh, getting ready for an upcoming fight, and then he um, we got uh, that one short notice. About he took it on Tuesday. We got the call on Tuesday, and then he fought on uh, Saturday, dropped twenty pounds, and then won one win won their uh, title. So that was cool. That was cool, man. He definitely yeah. cool. And uh, dropping, watching somebody drop twenty pounds. You know what I mean, like. What does what does that look like? What does that feel like? Uh man, it's just um, I mean he was he was dieting and you know getting his body prepped for a cut anyway, so it actually wasn't too crazy. You know we got the fight at one seventy five and they still made it a title fight and um, yeah man it it just depends. I mean I've had like personally I've had some really rough twenty pounds and I've had some really you know when you're doing it right you've had some pretty easy weight you know twenty pounds so. Yeah, man, it's just, uh, I mean, he's tall as shit, so he gets lanky as hell. You know, he's six foot four, and uh, yeah, so his 20 pounds looks a lot different, you know, shape-wise than mine does, but yeah, it's always rough, man. Cutting weight, it don't matter if it's five pounds or 20 pounds, sucks. Yeah, definitely, and, and six foot four, man, how did that, how did he get so tall? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, my... Uh, my grandparents were all like uh, my bi biological grandfather on my dad's side. He was taller. My grandpa on my mom's side is pretty, you know, he's like over six foot. So I'm guessing that's where it happened. No, Yeah, yeah. Me and my other brother's 5'11", too, so my littlest brother. So I'm just the I'm the short one of the group. All right, all right. Well, you're probably the toughest, though, out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think i got that big brother edge when we're sparring and stuff i think it, mentally there's a block from when we we're younger that they mm -hmm. can't ever get past so i think i'll, I'll keep to that i'll keep to that one because uh yeah they'll catch me man they'll catch me for sure so what's the the next steps for your brother man it seems like he's got a lot of momentum yeah man uh just keep going just keep riding the wave going through the circuit and yeah man uh that's all there is to it. You know, um, my littlest brother's fighting this weekend for his, uh, for an amateur title. And then, uh, Brady will get him back in at the beginning of the year and get, get the ball, keep the ball rolling. And, you know, uh, yeah, he's just, you gotta, you gotta go through the progressions and the, and the circuit, you know, just like the rest of us. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, he picks up, you know, he gets to seven, eight and one, eight and two. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So. Exactly, another another pair of brothers in the UFC, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you definitely never know, you know. And he's definitely a his style is exciting, crazy. You know, it's the opposite of mine. You know, he's a he's a tall, lanky, uh, tall, lanky fighter, and he's you know he's got that different mentality. He just loves to fight. You know, he's never been an athlete, and you know when he uh, when he started doing this, it was just to lose weight. You know, he's two hundred fifty pounds. Uh, now he fights at 170. So when he walked in the gym, it was just to lose strictly lose weight, not to do MMA. And then he started doing MMA and had one fight, and uh, yeah, he loved it. So yeah, only in MMA where a guy walks into the gym to lose weight and then end up becoming a professional fighter. Yeah, it's insane, man. It's it's still mind boggling that he is uh, he is fighting like my littlest brother. Like I always knew that you know he was a wrestler, he was an athlete. Like I always knew he wanted to fight at some point. Um, but Brady, I never saw it coming. You know, he's been at this for four or five years now, and it's, it's just, it's still mind boggling every time he gets in there. So, yeah. Nice. Now turning the attention to you, man, alongside getting this fight book coming up, you signed a new four fight deal. How did that all come together? You know, usually off a of loss, people don't get resigned. I mean, I'm two and two, but you know, my, my first fight, it was, you know, eight days notice against Grant Dawson. Uh, 
then I got two wins, picked up two, you know, credible wins, uh, TJ Laramie and then uh, Rosa. And then, you know, I dropped the ball against Darren Elkins, but, you know, I performed until I didn't, you know, like I, I mean, obviously the ref was going to stop it a couple of times that first round, like he was calling for it and like all that. So, I mean, I just, man, I've, I've paid my dues and I'm exciting, man. And I think they just like the way I fight, you know, I'm, I'm I, I don't say no to fights, you know, I, I, I'll fight anybody. I'm, I got that old school mentality other, you know, um, yeah, man. I think, um, uh, I think Sean really sees that, you know, with down here with James Krause and the guys that I'm really coming to my own and I keep improving every fight and, um, yeah, man, uh, gonna make a run at this for sure. So yeah, it was awesome to get the four fight deal. It was awesome to get this fight. Um, yeah, yeah, everything's good, man. Definitely, definitely. And and you know, looking back at the last fight, I felt like the two wins that you had before it, man, huge momentum. We talk, you know, every time, so you know, mm-hmm. you know the situation. And when you look back at that fight, like where do you feel like something went wrong? No, pretty much like, man, I was just hesitant on a lot of things, like. It was just, it was a cross between uh, not pulling the trigger on some of those chokes, you know, that I, that I thought I had, but like, I would, I would be like, oh, you're not supposed to, oh, go, you know, and it was just, it was just that mind thing. And uh, I wore myself out, you know, I wore, I got, my muscles got worn out. I mean, I think maybe the staff had something to do with it uh, that I got 10 days prior. I I was on antibiotics and all that stuff, but uh, man, I just don't bring light to that stuff because there's no excuses. I should be able to take take Darren Elkins down or, you know, I could have beat him up on his feet. Like anyway, the only way he had to win is how it happened is was with me getting tired. And, um, and that's my own. I put, I take the whole hundred percent of the blame. James laid out the great game plan. I had a great camp. Everything was good. Um, yeah, man, my lungs felt great. It was just, my arms were burnt out. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's about it. I mean, no excuses. It's just, uh, one of those things that dude can take an ass beating, man. He can, he's proved it. And I, we knew that going in, and uh the ref was going to stop it a couple of times i think that kind of got my adrenaline pumping a little more than than what it should have uh he was like darren you got to move darren you got to move and i'm like i'm i'm seconds away you know so um yeah just just a lot of factors man just listening better and going back to how i was in that rosa rosa fight listening everything was uh clear everything was uh smooth coach you had the had the controllers i was just doing what he said and uh yeah we'll get right back to that here come next week so so uh, a little more patient in your approach maybe yeah man and uh you know that's yeah i'm gonna have a lot of patience come next week so a lot of patience uh you know i mean there's there's the the fight's tricky so yeah there's definitely gonna be a lot of patience with with this we got a great game plan and all that so Definitely, man. It's it's your world too, man. It's not just Ryan Hall's. It's almost like every time Ryan Hall fights, it's like the fighter that he's facing is entering his world. But your world is his world, right? Well, I look at it this way, man. This is my world. I'm not going on a jiu-jitsu match. This is my world. Like, he's entering my world. I've had 50-plus fights. He has 10. All right, let's – like, that's the way I think about it. I think about, like, Ryan Hall's coming to my world. I've been doing this shit a lot longer, and, you know, MMA-wise, I have a lot more experience than he does, uh, you know, I, I, by far. So, uh, yeah, man, that's that's my philosophy on it. Like, it's not it's not about entering his world, you know. Um, we're getting in a cage, and we're going to we, – we can punch, you know. If it was a jiu-jitsu match, it would be a little different, but this ain't, this ain't jiu-jitsu. Do you feel like in the last fight, Ryan Hall's last fight, he was somewhat exposed by his f- opponent? Yeah, man. Uh, we everybody's seen that. You know, if he can't get a leg lock, what, what's he gonna do? You know, he's gonna throw a few spinning wheel kicks. And I mean, yeah, he was exposed. But like, you watch him fight, you just know what to do. You just can't get suckered into playing leg lock games. You know. Uh, I mean, BJ Penn was doing great until he wasn't. You know, and. Uh, if Elkins had a little more head movement, he was doing great too. He was just getting hit with those spinning wheel kicks, and that's what won Ryan Hall the fight. Arguably, was just the spinning wheel kicks. He's got a little more head movement. He probably wins that fight. So, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, he was definitely definitely exposed. But I think everybody knows how to, you know, knew what that going into watching him fight is that, uh, yeah, how to how to how to fight uh, Ryan Hall. So. In in the leg lock game, you know what I mean? Like, there's not many guys out there in MMA that can, you know, utilize that skill set effectively. He's 
maybe yep. one of them, but it almost seems like he is maybe not one of them. You know what I mean? He did it to certain fighters, but when you get to a certain level, it's different, right? Yeah, man. And, uh, I mean, maybe he won't roll as much, but I, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I doubt it. You know, he's been doing that shit. He created his own system. I mean, he's been doing that shit his whole life. Um, you know, he's not going to stand there and fight me, you know, he's just not. And, you know, uh, he was rolling and then you saw in the, the fight with the Poirier, he was getting tired. He was getting that anxiety was getting to him and he was, he was, he was starting to wear down. He was starting to not believe in himself. Uh, you could just tell, like, he just slowly decreased in that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of laid out the, the feelings about that, you know. Who knows? With with the ground and with, with even the striking, just overall MMA, you know what I mean, at, at Glory, like, are the, are the sparring partners the same as, as the last camp? Yeah, man, everything, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, obviously different game plan, different looks. I got two guys that I roll with, uh, Justin and Paul, the brown belt and a black belt. They're, they're big inverting, uh, leg lock guys. And so, uh, so I've been, uh, rolling with those guys one to two times a week, just strictly with them, just us, us three rolling. So, um, so that's been different. Uh, the game, man, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm tired of fucking leg locks, that's for sure. You know, I'm t- I'm tired of defending, you know, I just getting those situations, thinking about him and all that. So, I mean, yeah, so I'm ready to get get next week over with, so I don't have to think about that for a while. <laughs> definitely, definitely, man, definitely. That, that was my next question is, like, are you enjoying defending all the leg locks all the time, like a couple times a week? But I guess not. It's just, it's just different for me, you know, because my, my style is totally different. Like, I have to. I, uh, I can play the safe jujitsu game, you know, I can play that and I can play the ground and pound and beat you. But like, you know, my style is transition, transition, transitions, but you're going to see a different type of, of transitions and fighter out of me come next week to, to beat him up. I mean, that's pretty much what, what the game plan is. You know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to, I'm going to implement what I want to do. And if he wants to play that game, so be it, you know, I got a few tricks up my sleeve and I can grapple too, you know? So, so, what do you expect, man? Do you expect to take the neck? Do you do you expect to go to the ground and just be like, all right, you're in my world. I'm going to take your neck. It's it's going to be over like that. Uh, man, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to, it's not going to go out there. I'm a, I'm expecting a long, long fight. I'm expecting probably, you know, a little more slow pace than I'm used to. I'm expecting to go in there and mix it up and watch, you know, he's going to roll and whatever, you know, if he wants to pull guard, he wants to do anything like, um, I got great ground and pound. So if that's what he wants to do, I, I'm not a, I'm just going to go in there and fight with, with a clear head, listen to my coach and implement the game plan, you know, and, uh, see where it takes us. You know, I, I, I'm going to get him out of there late, uh, second, third round. I'm going to get, get him out of there. So however it happens, it, it, it'll happen. You know, uh, if I walk out of there with a decision, if I walk out of there with a, with a KO a submission, whatever it takes, like it's going to, it's going to happen. So. Sounds good, man. Um, a couple more questions before I let you go. Yep. PTSD, you know, PTSD from like injuries, weight cuts, losses, even maybe damage taken in a fight. Does it exist? Is it something that is widespread in MMA? Yeah, I mean, if you let it get to you, it just depends. I think that I think that depends on your experience level too. I think that has a lot to do. I I you know, for me, I've been there, done that. I I've been in every situation you can be in in a cage. I've I've had the wins. I've had the loss. I've had I've been in every situation. I've definitely been in them in the gym. But I can say that I've probably been in almost every situation in 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 a fight. The outcome, whatever you know. But guys like Ryan Hall haven't really had that. So maybe that maybe that has an effect on how he's training, how he's doing, whatever. I'm not thinking about him. But, yeah, I think it definitely has a has an effect. But some people handle it different just because of their experience level in whatever they do. I think, uh, yeah. So I definitely think it exists. But I think that some people are able to uh, handle it and been there, done that, and, you know, been through it. So... Without saying any names, you know, you've, like you said, you've had a lot of experience. You've trained with a lot of different people. Have you seen it, like, put someone in a downward spiral because that they have some lasting effects of something traumatic? Uh, I 100% uh, think that some people 
I've definitely seen it. I've definitely seen it close, close to me. I, I definitely, I mean, you know, one of, one of my, one of my good friends and stuff, he, you know, and he wouldn't even care. I taught you. So one of my buddies, he lost a contender series, you know, we got a short notice replacement, he ended up losing a contender series. And I think after that, he really, it wasn't that he, it wasn't that there was PD. I think he just didn't care at that point. It's like, fuck, you know, like I'm older. Like, you know, it's just like that rebuilding phase. And sometimes that, that takes a toll on somebody. If you take that loss and then all of a sudden you get caught in your next fight or whatever happens, then, then that, that leads to it. That career, it, sometimes it can be a career ender. It can be a mind ender. And you just be like, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore, you know, type stuff. So yeah, I definitely, I've definitely seen it multiple times, but, um, uh, it just depends on how you handle the situation and how much of your life you're willing to give up for this. Definitely. And uh, one last thing, open-ended question, you know, something outside of uh, MMA, outside of training, what usually keeps you up at night? My, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, my, I mean, I got, you know, I got two daughters at home, you know, it's, uh, yeah, definitely that, the, the thing that it's, it's not, they're there they go to bed you know everything that what keeps you up at night is just making sure that you know you give them what you didn't have you know i think that's what keeps me up and that keeps me striving for what what i'm doing and trying to improve in this game and spending eight weeks you know all monday through friday away from them um it's just that keeps me up at night just being able to give them what i didn't have and 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 provide for them you know like i wasn't provided for so and uh yeah that's that's definitely a huge one for me yeah i'm pretty sure there's millions and millions of people that can relate to exactly what you're saying right now december 11th man you're back in the cage ufc 269 yeah, pay-per-view thank you so much Derek, for the time ryan hall is going to be an incredible fight thank you yeah, i'm excited man